for tonight's film, we have one of our best, best friends, uh, Dr. Olivier Morel uh, in the FDT department and also Romance and Languages to set the stage. Let's give a warm welcome to Olivier. Thank you, Rick. It's beautiful to see this theater with so many people in, in the theater. Um, I want to thank Ricky, of course, but also Kevin, who is in the booth this evening. Um, yes, Transit. The film that we're about to watch this evening is a free adaptation of the eponym novel by German anti-Nazi writer Anna Zegers. Zegers wrote this book in Mexico while in exile between 1941 and 1942. The original version of this text was published by uh, the daily newspaper Berliner Zeitung in 1947. Transit, the novel, draws from Anna Zegers' own experience as a persecuted anti-Nazi asylum seeker who was attempting to flee Europe. At the time, many of the German intellectuals, and especially German Jewish elite uh, members, ended up in the city of Marseille in the south of France, set in the so-called free zone, zone libre, right? Supposedly the unoccupied zone uh, in France, unoccupied by the Nazis, of course, that had already started to actively persecute um, the anti-Nazi people as well as the Jewish uh, people. And France was collaborating, collaborating with the Nazis at the time um, after the 1940 uh, defeat of France against the Nazis. In other words, Marseille was anything but a safe place. In Marseille, many anti-Nazi and Jewish intellectuals and artists from Germany and elsewhere are waiting for a visa and a boat in order to reach the United States as well as various South American countries. Zegers is one of them. The only daughter of an art dealer, she was born in an Orthodox Jewish family in the German city of Mainz in 1900. And it is not anecdotal that Zegers, like many Jewish members, many Jewish citizens in Germany at the time, had volunteered to serve in the army during the First World War when she was not even 18 years old. After completing a PhD on Rembrandt, the painter, she had moved to Berlin in 1926 in a time of great political turmoil with the rise of the Nazi party while the growing influence of the Communist Party turned the city into a battlefield with constant physical bloody confrontations between the Nazis and the Communists. It is around this time in 1928 that Zegers publishes the, her first award-winning novel, later adapted for the big screen by the famous legendary filmmaker and artist Erwin Piscato in 1928. 1928 is definitely a turning point in her life as she also joined the Communist Party of Germany, the KPD. When the Nazis come to power, she's threatened by the regime, she gets arrested and later is released, but it's time to leave. Her books are banned and burned in public. She flees to Paris and later to Marseille. Needless to say, this whole background of persecutions on the basis of race and political affiliations, as well as being a creative intellectual, is absolutely critical in order to understand Transit, her book. Transit, by German filmmaker Christian Petzold, lies in the foot prints of Zegers' highly revered book. For many after the war, the novel had been largely forgotten. This lack of interest and memory lapse affected most of the great artists, thinkers, and writers of Zegers' generation, with few exceptions. It is only around the 80s, slowly, that those authors started to be rediscovered as part of what is now called in German the exil literature, the exile literature. It took a student movement in 1968 and during the 70s to revive this great generation and this great tradition of anti-Nazi and Jewish uh, intellectuals and artists. It, take this, it took this uh, student movement to revisit the crimes of the Second World War in Germany. This rediscovery 
came even later in France. I remember Stefan Hessel, the son of the great writer, German refugee Franz Hessel, telling me in an in interview uh, 15 years ago, with uh, sadness mixed with, with frustrations about this awful delay by which his father's work, the great writer Franz Hessel, uh, as well as the work of the famous philosopher Walter Benjamin, his friend, was rediscovered in the, the 80s and the 90s, that is 40 to 50 years after the war. It must be said that aside from the fact that those figures of the German intelligentsia were spread around the world, many of them did not survive the war. Walter Benjamin, Walter Hasen Clever, Franz Hessel, to name just a few, went through Marseille and died, either of exhaustion, like Franz Hessel, or by suicide, like Walter Hasen Clever and Walter Benjamin. He did not go through Marseille, but you might remember that the famous Austrian writer, Stefan Zweig, committed suicide with his wife in Brazil in exile in 1942. These obvious politically motivated suicide are a topic depicted in transit, the film. Like the book, the film does more than just retracing the fate of this generation. Among other things, I'll mention the importance of the text, of literature, of bearing witness, of leaving a legacy in writing or you know, through art. At last, at least, leaving traces, the last traces left by the detainees of a world turned into an unbearable system of oppression, of torture and incarceration. Fear of the police, of brutal persecutions, of a precarious present and future. And finally, the fiction of departure, the unpredictability of receiving a visa, of finding a passage, a boat to exile. All those fears are well depicted in this film. Thanks to Zegers, it is not just a story, but the inner, almost metaphysical dilemmas that are documented here. The psyche of exile and persecution is set in a powerful way in the film. Christian Petzold, you will see that, decided to set the action in the city of Marseille, but not in 1941, 1942. This is Marseille today in 20. 18, when the film was made. I will let you draw the conclusions on what this move might signify. This is Transit by Christian Petzold. Thank you.